subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button people have to live in in unity we are still in transition civil society has been decimated of course we rely on media and i think the government has not done enough the international community has failed to respond no place in the world is perfect the yoga event is held here severe injustice and they should be stopped we should raise our voices condemn this uh, brutal act Hello viewers I'm your host Uzma Jafri with another episode of South Asia Focus let's begin the show it appears that the time limit of the recent chinese mind game in india is over after weeks of incursion into indian territory of ladakh and its stubbornness during talks the chinese side is now deescalating and disengaging at the indian border this isn't the first time when the two sides have disengaged after weeks of standoff Even in 2017 both sides had confronted each other for over 2 months near the Indian state of Sikkim experts say that Beijing has been playing a psychological war and since India is more prepared and experienced when it comes to fighting a full-fledged war the Chinese army has backtracked China's Public Liberation Army has once again started vacating the Indian region it had illegally occupied in the past several weeks. The two diplomatic sides received a shot in the arm after both of them agreed to gradually de-escalate at the de facto border along the Indian Union territory of Ladakh. Chinese side, which was unyielding during different commander level negotiations, said that it was looking forward to ease tension at border through effective communication channels with India. Dui现场的具体情况我没有办法,我没有更多的具体的信息可以向你提供,但是我可以向你确认中印双方通过外交和军事的渠道已经就妥善处理中印边界西段的有关事态进行了有效的沟通。However, not everything Beijing speaks to cameras can be trusted. It has taken U-turns on several occasions in the past, including its everyday changing narratives on coronavirus. The country's diplomacy is loaded with sugar, but the reality reeks of conspiracies and its constant plans of occupying other territories to further its own imperialist agenda. Various open intelligence sources across the globe have confirmed that it was Chinese army that had violated the decades old status quo in the region. China has blatantly lied through its mouthpieces. that it got alert on seeing the construction along the border and it built up against the same however the truth is that india was constructing miles inside its own territory and chinese version was nothing short of hogwash china is also rattled by the fact that despite of all its social media lies and tricks it has been unable to create even a small dent in the indian army morale As per various reports which the officials have not confirmed, New Delhi was not ready to give in to Chinese bullying this time and had started mobilizing its troops in Ladakh to counter Chinese build up. Their army there's big bulky big with modern weapon but the soldiers are not properly trained to fight a war sustained war. They are more or less like showmen show soldiers for ceremony of course they look very good on parade and all with beautiful timings and all that's about all so chinese know very well that indians will not uh, you know hesitate in giving them a drubbing but china is trying to play on the moral uh, pressure on the india psychological pressure and that is why it's talking trying to talk big 
putting in tanks, bringing in so many things. While Beijing claims that it wants peace with all of its neighbors, it cannot afford a war with anyone, especially India, under current circumstances. Its economy that has been hit hard due to the spread of coronavirus and is likely to decline even more in coming quarters has stakes worth $30 billion in Indian market. It is earning almost double of it from India every year. Many of its companies that have been ostracized and banned in other countries have their limited market left in India. Its ties with its immediate neighbors and economic powers are at an all-time low due to what some call it complicity, while others say its culpability in the outbreak of COVID-19. China is on a slippery slope, both economically and diplomatically. And in such a situation, even conceiving a war should be its last priority, let alone fighting and winning it. Moving on to Bangladesh, where hundreds of workers who have now become unemployed due to shutdown of factories are protesting against the government, demanding their previous salaries. The industry sector, which accounts for around 40% of the total workforce of the country, has been hit hard due to the growing pandemic and a large section of it is unable to resume operations owing to an absence of the contracts that were cancelled after the virus prompted a worldwide lockdown. Hundreds of garment workers protested overdue wages and shuttered factories near Bangladesh's Labour Ministry. They were from the Dhaka Export Promotion Zone, an area with hundreds of factories in the city. Although hundreds of garment factories were able to reopen at the end of April after a week-long shutdown to curb the spread of the coronavirus, many have remained closed, unable to export goods and without new orders. These workers are now at a point in their lives where they neither have jobs nor savings for their future. The workers say they want help from the ministry and prime minister having gone for months without pay. Bangladesh is home to around 4,000 garment factories employing 4.1 million workers and industry groups for the sector had previously warned that the shutdown that began on March 26 could cause the country to lose $6 billion in export revenue this financial year. Bangladesh is one of the fastest growing economies in South Asia and around the world, but a large section of it lives under national poverty standards and even more on just above the line. People living under poverty comprise around 21% of the total population and with countries' industries enduring a huge economic blow due to the virus lockdown, a sudden spike in the numbers is expected. As per a tally, around 1,000 people have died in Bangladesh due to coronavirus. Experts say that the unemployment rate, which today stands at 4.29%, might witness a sudden spike due to the coronavirus in near future. Major financial observers say that all sectors of Bangladesh, whether it is industry, agriculture or service sector, are projected to suffer a comprehensive decline this year. In 2019, 39.7% of the employees in Bangladesh were active in agriculture sector, 
20.53% in industry and 39.76% in the service sector. Moving on to India, where its largest public service, the Indian Railways, has turned out to be a saviour for the citizens amid coronavirus crisis. Starting from the cancellation of trains to supplying essential commodities, Railways has gone an extra mile to contain the virus spread. So today, let's take a look at some of the precautionary measures that the Indian Railways has taken to fight against the virus. From launching a massive awareness drive to turning the coaches into isolation wards, Indian Railways has gone full throttle to contain the outbreak. Despite COVID-19-induced nationwide lockdown, it maintained its freight corridors at full capacity, ensuring the availability of essential commodities through its 24-7 freight and parcel train services. Since April, a total of 178.68 million tons of commodities have been transported through as many as 3,861 parcel trains in which 3,755 were timetable trains. Zonal railways are regularly identifying and notifying routes of these parcel trains that are being operated on 96 routes. Indian Railways traffic service officers have also come up with Setu facility that has emerged as a big relief for the people amid coronavirus as it allows customers to call and place requests for bulk essential items. कोविड महामारी के कारण देशव्यापी लॉकडाउन की स्थिति को देखते हुए इंडियन रेलवे ट्रैफिक सर्विसेज के ऑफिसर्स द्वारा सेतु नाम का एक इनिशिएटिव लिया जा रहा है इसके अंतर्गत कोई भी व्यक्ति संस्था प्रशासन या कोई भी नीडी व्यक्ति हमारे पूरे भारतीय रेलवे नेटवर्क में चलाई जा रही टाइम टेबल पार्सल ट्रेनों के माध्यम से देश के किसी भी स्टेशन से किसी भी डेस्टिनेशन स्टेशन तक आवश्यक वस्तुएं मेडिसिन मेडिकल इक्विपमेंट्स एग्रीकल्चर प्रोडक्ट्स रॉ मटेरियल वगैरह इनकी बुकिंग करा सकते हैं और अपने गंतव्य स्टेशन तक उसको ले जाया जा सकता है Indian Railways also helped the stranded migrant workers to reach their hometown through its special shramik trains. Till date, more than 57 lakh migrant workers have been transported through 4,155 shramik special trains operationalized from various states. During this whole transportation process, authorities sanitized the train coaches, screened the passengers, and ensured that they practice social distancing at the railway stations. कोई दिक्कत नहीं हुई सब हमें सही लग रहा है रास्ते में अच्छी सुविधा है खाने पीने की सब Meanwhile, in order to meet the unprecedented surge in the demand of intensive care units, Indian Railways converted hundreds of rail coaches to make around 5150 isolation wards for the COVID-19 patients. Shakur Basti Station at New Delhi became the first in the rail network to provide COVID hospital on wheels facility. Every coach of the train is going to have one doctor, one nurse from paramedical staff, one attendant and one cleaner. Facilities of oxygen cylinders are also made at the isolation facility by railways. एक कोच के अंदर नौ कूपे होते हैं जिसमें से एक कूपे मेडिकल और पैरामेडिकल स्टाफ को दिया जाता है और आठ कूपे जिसमें सोलह पेशेंट जो हैं वो इस कोच के अंदर रह सकते हैं और ऐसे दस कोच हमने अभी रखे हैं तो इसमें एक सौ साठ पैसेंजर जो है वो इसमें अकोमोडेट किए जा सकते हैं As a part of extra precautionary measures, railway stations in different parts of the country have also installed vending machine that dispenses masks and sanitizer bottles. Keeping in mind the rapidly increasing cases of the virus, the railway stations have installed the machine which has mask and sanitizer at subsidized rates. The mask 95 standard wale hai, uski kima 100 rupees hai. सैनिटाइजेशन के लिए जो छोटी सी सी और बड़ी सी सी है फिफ्टी रुपीज़ और हंड्रेड रुपीज़ करके हैं ये अवेलेबल है पैसेंजर्स को करना सिर्फ इतना ही है कोई बॉदरसम प्रॉब्लम नहीं है वेरी सिंपल कि जो आप कोड देखते हैं जो आइटम आपने पसंद किया बड़ी सी सी छोटी सी या मास्क 
उसके नीचे कोड लगे हुए उस कोड को दबा देना है मॉनिटर पर ऑटोमेटिक आ जाएगा कि इतने प्राइस हैं वह करेंसी नोट दे देना है मशीन ऑटोमेटिक वे उसको शक कर लेती है और आपके सामान ऊपर से ड्रॉप हो जाते हैं द वे इंडियन रेलवे इज एडिंग द फाइट अगेंस्ट कोविड नाइन्टीन इज ट्रूली कमेंडेबल Recently it has also created a new world benchmark by successfully running first double stack container train and high rise overhead equipment electrified sections Moving on people in the illegally occupied POK are being subjected to discrimination even at the time of a health crisis while the affluent class which comprises mainly of the islamabad backed politicians and bureaucrats has been flourishing even more due to the cushions and liberty provided by authorities the poor and destitute have been pushed further down the economic ladder they have lost everything employment savings and optimism people in the illegally occupied pok say that it is the local administration's inaction and systematic discrimination that has led to the misery and suffering in the region the region is under lockdown since 23rd march but only one section of people is following it the poor while the authorities have been taking stern action against the poor for not abiding the guidelines they have been liberal and forgiving with the elite and influential class in the region they have even been allowed to mint money at a time when they are supposed to keep people confined to their homes while on the other side the poor is staring at the end of his life hukumat ne awam ko हालात पर छोड़ दिया हकूमत ने ट्रांसपोर्ट बंद कर दी मजबूर लोग जो एक सौ रुपये पर सफ़र करते थे वो एक हज़ार रुपये पर सफ़र करने पर मजबूर हो बासर लोगों की गाड़ियों को नहीं रोका गया इस वक्त हकूमत में हकूमत के यानी वजरा के अकार पुलिस मैन ऑफिसर्स और मख्तलि यानी जो ताकतवर तबका थे उनकी रेंट की गाड़ियाँ सर आम सड़कों पर चलती रही और वो मन मन में किराए वसूल करते रहे अगर कोरोना ट्रांसपोर्ट पब्लिक से फैल सकता है तो उन गाड़ियों से भी फैलता रहा या फैल सकता रहा और इसी तरह जो दुकानें बंद थी और जो बासर थे उन्होंने एक अपने निज़ाम के तहत उन कारोबार को बंद नहीं होने दिया उसकी कोई तरीके उन्होंने रखे तो बाकी जो सबसे नाकाम तरीन मामला रहा वो शायद वफाक का हो या आज़ाद हकूमत का हो वो ये रहा गरीब से निवाले चिंते रहे गरीब को किसी ने पानी नहीं पिलाया गरीब को कोई खाना खिला नहीं सका और गरीब अपने हाल पर रहे रह गया और मफलूक हाल होते होते वो जिनके अपने मरने के करीब आ गया हकूमतें सिर्फ बयानबाजी और अखबारी तशहर और मीडिया पर एक अच्छे ज्ञान देते रहे पाकिस्तान विच कंट्रोल्स द रीजन इज इट सेल्फ क्रिपल्ड बाय पॉलिसी पर वेदर इट इज डोमेस्टिक और फॉरन and now at a time of covid crisis even its poor health sector has been exposed it has been doing nothing on ground in pok to protect people from the menace of the virus it has just copied what its neighboring states are doing without realizing the exact nature of the problem as a result an indefinite shutdown has only expanded the size of people's problem local leaders accuse the legislators hamari awaaz kamzor hai hum us waqt bhi ye batate rahe ke lockdown is mars ka mustaqil hal nahi aur is masail se zyada logon ke rozgar ka logon ke deegar amur ke hawale se masail hain us par bhi tawajjuh di ja sakti hai badkismati se hukumat to siyasi एक कोशिश और कावश से और वोटों से बनती हैं लेकिन जब वो जब ईवान इकतदार में चली जाती हैं तो पॉलिसी बनाने वाले ब्यूरोक्रेट्स होते हैं तो हमारे बहुत कम मम्बरान असम्बली या वजरा वो पॉलिसी मेकिंग पर तोजह देते हैं और अक्सर वजरा या मम्बरान असम्बली सिर्फ ये पूछते हैं अपने ब्यूरोट से अपने सेक्शन ऑफिसर अपने सेक्रेटरी से अपने डी जी से कि दस हर काम कर लें द रीजन रिसोर्सेज है 
plundered by Pakistan and the growing unemployment rate with no effective measures being taken by the so-called government of the region, the gravity of the looming misery cannot be estimated. The existing humanitarian situation might plunge into an irrevocable crisis and Pakistan, which hasn't cared for people's life in the past seven decades, will not bother even this time. Moving on. Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan has been a master of goof-ups and he has been periodically expressing his idiocy over social media. This time, he took to Twitter to share a couplet in a bid to send a message of peace and brotherhood in his otherwise religiously volatile country. It turned out that he had wrongly attributed the poem to the national poet of Pakistan, Allama Iqbal, the man who is disliked by all except Punjabis in his country. Altaf Hussain, the founder of Pakistan's Muttahida Qaumi movement, has said that poet Allama Iqbal has been eulogized by Punjabi nationalists and he did not represent the ideology of Pakistan, but of Greater Punjab for the protection of the interests of West Punjab. Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan's recent goof up on social media has given space to a fresh debate in the country. And it is over Pakistan's national poet Allama Iqbal. Whether he advocated peace and unity or he was a propagator of ideas and propaganda of country's army generals and hardliners. The turn of events started with Pakistani Prime Minister wrongly attributing a poem to Iqbal and later apologizing for it. He had appealed the youth to follow their lives as per poetic prescription. However, the leaders of Sindh, a region that has been politically marginalized and discriminated over the years, say that the poet worked at the payrolls of British and never supported the idea of Pakistan. <laughs> Altaf Hussain in his latest address through social media said that Sindh, Balochistan, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Gilgit Baltistan have become colonies of Punjab through the military power and asserted that Pakistan has become Punjabistan. He said Muhajirs, Sindhis, Baloch, Pashtuns and people of Gilgit Baltistan want freedom from Pakistan and strongly condemned the atrocities and human rights violations in Pakistan by the state forces. Pakistan ke liye nahi, Pakistan ke parcham ki aad mein, Pakistan ke naam pe greater Punjab ka mansooba tha, tha. और आज तक है चाइना से तुम कितनी डील कर लो सिंधी और महाजर जब तक जिंदा है सिंध पे चाइना के साथ करो या अमेरिका बर्तानिया के साथ कर लिया जितना करना था अल्ताफ हुसैन एमक्यूएम अ मेनस्ट्रीम पॉलिटिकल पार्टी ऑफ महाजर्स हैज डोमिनेटेड पाकिस्तान्स लार्जेस्ट सिटी कराची सिंस द 1980स when the security forces cracked down on the party in 1990s, Altaf Hussein sought asylum in the United Kingdom. Even from exile in London, Hussein has been a vocal critic of Pakistan's policies and often blames it of using force to muzzle dissenting voices in the country. 
His political messages have resonated with the mass and the youth of the region has mobilized a campaign against the establishment. The MQM has been demanding equal rights for the Muhajirs, the people who traveled and shifted in Pakistan after the partition of India. Pakistan has been ill-treating the Muhajirs through its systematic designs. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care.